Hello, I'm Michael Tilly. Welcome to our latest Supply Side Digital segment. We have Kim Souza here today who is our guru, all things Walmart, all things supplier community. She has a handle on it or knows folks to contact and help her get a handle on it. One of the things that so we were talking beforehand, in almost any day with Walmart, you can be talking about acquisitions, layoffs, new management, uh, Amazon competition, uh, this OTIF thing, uh, new tools. Of all of that that you've been tracking lately, what has you think the most impact now? What's the most challenging thing Walmart is now facing and or its suppliers? Okay, there's a lot, but I'll start with marrying on store and in line what they're calling omni-channel. Uh, Walmart has a great omni-channel leader in Mark Lorry, but he's never run physical stores. Um, there's some problems marrying those two things are quite different, especially from the supplier perspective. The suppliers here in Northwest Arkansas are used to stocking stores, right. tracking inventory per store. When it goes online, they don't know who's buying it. They know how much is being bought, but they don't know, you know where it's being sold. Um, that brings up problems for forecasting demand. Um, that's a concern for them, replenishment. There's just a lot of kinks in the system, and Walmart continues to push the online sales ahead of almost everything else. The online pickup in store, and we know that that's driving, it's helping overall online sales, but the per store sales are actually going down and Walmart's having to realign management in those stores to compensate. Well, and so to that point, you know, Walmart, as we, we've been watching them for years now, I've seen them or watched them do some things where I think, well, that'll never work and it works great. Or I'll, and I'll watch them do something, I'll think, hey, that's really smart. And it's a failure. So do you think though in this push for the, on, the interaction between online and in-store, do you think they'll eventually get it or are there gonna be some big hiccups? Tell me what you see in the near term for that process, for that path. Right now, I see more growing pains. I do think that Walmart is a leader in this area. They have the scale and the ability to move fast and they are. They are learning on the fly and adjusting as they need to. That's what that's they said that's how they're going to do things. That's that's problematic for suppliers who are always playing catch up. <laughs> um, I think Walmart will figure it out. I think if anybody can figure it out, Walmart I mean, will figure it out. Oh, well, I want to get back to OTIF on time in full, but first yes. um, we were talking earlier. It, here's what I remember two or three years ago at a Walmart shareholder session where you had Greg Foran and Judith McKenna talking about we're going to put bodies back in the stores. We cut too much. We're going to put managers back in the stores. Lately, we're hearing, and yeah, we're pulling, we're pulling back on some of that. Explain to me because I I hear two different messages. Tell me what I'm missing on what they're doing. They are realigning store personnel. I personally asked Greg Foran if they were reducing store personnel last year. He said, not really reducing, but realigning. You will know that they're putting in more self-checkouts. That's taking away the checkers. Right. But they've added th over a thousand personal shoppers who actually pick the orders Picks, yep. for online. That's a new position that didn't exist three years ago. And so there's realignment. They're also, they cleaned up their back rooms. We know they talked mm -hmm. about that and there's less people needed in the back room. They are taking away some department manager jobs, which they have heralded that they said were instrumental in their turnaround. Right. But what they're finding is they can, they can save money by asking the cell phone companies to bring their own people in. Uh, and so they're reducing jobs back in the cell phone imagine area. Imagine that, imagine that. <laughs> so I don't know that we're gonna see a lot less labor, but differently distributed labor. That that does involve layoffs. So, and of course everybody panics when it's layoffs, but the other side of that is Walmart, I guess, and kind of throwing this out as a question, you, you, want, to, you want a company to adapt, right? Sure. Look what happened to Kmart. So maybe is, this is just some growing pains or, or adapting pains. Um, OTIF, that's the big uh, on time in full. That is really where sometimes literally the rubber meets the road yeah. when it comes to getting um, product to the stores, the interaction between 
uh, vendors and Walmart. Tell me, where are we in the process and what do you, where do you see that going next? Okay, Walmart just had a supplier forum a week or so ago and they talked in great length about OTIF on time in full. They did scale back uh, the requirements right. that are coming up at the end of March. Penalties come with these, right? Penalties yeah, come stiff if you penalties, don't yes. fit the criteria, 85% for full load on time and in full and 50% for less than truck load. Walmart knows there's problems. Um, they're giving, they're bringing forth some tools to help suppliers. One of the biggest problems you, that suppliers have is they can't get an appointment to drive right. the truck into the window. Right. And when you have a one day delivery time and you can't get an appointment for that day, you're going to get stuck. Well, and part of that's feet. Walmart's problem. It's Walmart's problem. Yeah. Walmart knows it. They're working on it. Walmart's putting together a way to schedule the appointment with the PO, with the purchase order. So you will have a, you will know, you'll have a time to deliver when you make the order. There's a lot of kinks in that. Suppliers, they weren't given a timeline. Suppliers are anxious to get that right. or eager to get that. Um, you know, it's, it, you have rising transportation costs. Mm -hmm. Uh, capacity, capacity, tight capacity in the and shipping industry. That's a problem for Walmart. It's going to show up in their earnings this time. It's going to show up in their margins, not necessarily their earnings, but their margins. And that's something without the realm of, that's without their control. Right. Control. Uh, yeah. And so it's going to take longer to get to their goal. Walmart knows it. They've, they've told the suppliers that. But they're pushing forward. If you don't set a goal, you can't reach it, they said. Well, I, I predict a couple more drawbacks before they get to the eventual goal. I do too because mainly because of the transportation yep, issues. issues. Okay, you perfect segue quickly. Walmart earnings are coming up next week. Yes. Tell me what we should expect. Okay. I think they benefited from the strong holiday overall. We know that um, they have said their stores were busy. Analysts expect fourth quarter revenue of 134 billion. Um, which is will be up slightly. They expect full year, their fiscal year for 2018 revenue to be almost a half trillion. Wow. At 498 billion. They're inching toward the half trillion. Earnings overall are expected to be up as well. Um, for the fourth quarter, they're expecting about a 6% jump in earnings per share. And for the full year, it's about a 4%. Have so they given any guidance on how the tax reform, how the tax changes? They are, they are expected to benefit from that. We know they're giving bonuses right. to their, uh, they're giving bonuses for that and they're investing more in e-commerce, they said. Um, the headwinds uh, will be the margin compression from the transportation mm -hmm. issues. The Sam's Club 63 closures of Sam's Club, we know there'll be a charge for that. And also their corporate layoffs. They laid off over 500 people. Close 63 Sam's Club stores. Yes, there's expenses right. that come with that. Those will be um, headwinds for the quarter, but, they're, but they will see tailwinds from improve, improving FX uh, as the dollar has, right. winked, has, has weakened. And um, we had good weather this winter and so weather for some odd reason plays an impact on sales so it should be a good quarter for them um, and analysts like them for the year well the thing that i'm going to be watching with interest there's it's, it's always something but i'm looking forward to their guidance what they do with their full year guidance for the next fiscal year i i'll be very surprised if it doesn't inch up a little bit their guidance will inch up but they will give a wide guidance. This is what they've done for mm -hmm. the last eight quarters. They've given a wide guidance and they've hit right in the middle. And that's what analysts expect them to do. Yep. All right. Well, Kim, we didn't get to everything because there's no way. <laughs> but thanks for your time. Sure. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas. 
and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.